artistic elements. Yay for enthusiasm. Contrary to popular belief, or maybe just my belief, this chapter has nothing to do with what most people think of when thinking of art, which is awesome painting and drawing and stuff, but no! The reason this chapter is called Artistic Elements is because of the creative and poetic attributes people brought into science, or vice versa, brought science into their literature. Let me mention a select few of these people. Briefly, there are Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, yes, that's a silly name, I know, and he looks like a penguin, <sighs> J.W. Dubereiner, which coincidentally had the same name as the previous Wolfgang. Laszlo Moholy-Nagy, Kenneth Parker, he has a pen, Mark Twain, he looks angry, and Robert Lowell, who is crazy. Onward to Goethe. Goethe was a fine German bloke who lived in the 1700s when science was less closely tied to mathematics, which sounds like an awesome time, if you ask me. Goethe was a writer and deemed by some the Shakespeare of Germany. He dipped his brush in science and created the theory of colors and how they work, referring to the colors as beads of light. He wrote a novel titled Elective Affinities that compared marriages to chemical reactions. A much more impressive work of his is Faust, which talks of alchemy and other things, like Neptunus, of which Goethe was, who believed rocks precipitated from the ocean, and Plutonus, who thought rocks came from volcanoes. But now, let us jump to his apprentice, Darth Ma. No, I'm just kidding. Johann Wolfgang Dubereiner, or JW. Dubereiner's most important discovery were triads. He found these when he weighed strontium and found that it was between the weight of barium and calcium. The trend of the trilogies is what created the columns in the periodic table. Of course, people got distracted with religion and trinities and whatnot and did not actually complete the columns of the table. Although, this discovery was not the only thing that gave him the limelight. Dubarina's lamp was still a very important invention. You may know this as the lighter. It utilized the ability of platinum to store hydrogen gas. And of course, Dubarina would be nothing without his dear old Goethe. Let us move on briefly to Laszlo Moholy-Nagy. This chap theorized that humans will consume anything and everything as long as it's new and shiny. Shiny helps. He said that we aren't content with anything if there's a potential upgrade for it. Kenneth Parker found this inspiring. Parker here was the boss of the Parker Pen Company, and taking Laszlo's philosophy into account devised a sleek and pretty new pen model, famously known as Parker 51. This design was extremely coveted, even President Eisenhower used one. Today it would cost up to $400. The new addition to this design was a durable tip made out of ruthenium as a replacement for iridium and osmium which became the portmanteau Osmeridium. Its slogan was, It writes dry with wet ink. This is because for the first time, the ink bled into the fibers of the paper as opposed to air drying. Ah, good old Mark Twain. Mark Twain was perhaps the most popular dude in America at the time. Famous, of course, for his literature that most should be all too familiar with. Mark Twain had a typewriter. Mark Twain was conflicted about typewriters. Anyway, he ended up sponsoring the company that produces them unwillingly. Marky here thought he was so awesome because he integrated scientific discovery into his writing. Twain liked nuclear energy and naturally had an affinity for most of Marie Curie's discoveries. A story of his called Sold to Satan describes the composition of Satan as such. Satan here is made up entirely of radium. Mark here made this choice because radium gives off heat as it decays, making something the size of Satan considerably Hot. Mark goes on to imagine the devil with a fabulous coat of polonium, which he describes to be extremely thin and gelatin-like. Must have been for aesthetics. Enough about silly stories, let's talk about Robert Lowell. He was endearingly nicknamed Cal, as in Caliban the Man-Beast in The Tempest. I'll sum this up for you. Cal was crazy, but he was also artistic. He had one of those messed up but creative minds. So after being crazy for a while, he was finally institutionalized and given lithium. Lithium was used as a mood stabilizer back in the day, and if you're anything like me, you think of the song by Nirvana called Lithium, which was titled so because of lithium's prescribed use, because it was Kurt Cobain. The song probably would have been called Prozac if it had been written a few years later, but I digress. Lithium regulates the proteins that control the body's inner clock. The inner clock is kind of like the human's on and off switch. 
The final result from using lithium was that he was normal. Too normal. He lost most of that quirkiness that made him a brilliant artist. And so, I hope your newfound knowledge will behoove you in the assessment of this <coughs> stupid book. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I hope you learned about the artistic elements and the people that made them such. So I bid you adieu.